Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. Today we take a turn for the weird because I never thought I would see myself back in Arcage. Um, so it was kind of difficult for me to start this video because I had no clue where to start. I had no clue what type of video to make. So I figured I would just start off with an introduction as to why I am going to try out Arcage Unchained. So let's give a little bit of a, a little bit of a backstory. I started Arcage back in 2014. Played for I think two months, maybe three months on the alpha. I actually played it accidentally because my good buddy Akapo, we were like searching for an MMO, and he accidentally purchased the largest supporter pack for 150. Don't ask how it happened. Sometimes it doesn't always ask for a verified PayPal. So anyway, it just went through, and then I was like, "Fuck it, I guess I'll play this game too." Had a lot of fun with Dagger Spell. Um, played that. It's basically like a big CC caster with a super channeled meteor, wombo combo people. Fast forward. Um, Alpha was a really fun experience because there was no cash shop. For people who don't know, a cash shop is basically a shop that you can spend real money on. Uh, in some games, it gives you a huge advantage. Some games, it's like Path of Exile. It's purely cosmetic, uh, with the exception of stash tabs. Moving on, uh, day one of release came out, and I did not enjoy the cash shop. Um, Arcage runs on a system that is going to put off a lot of people called Labor. Labor is that thing where, you know, you play a mobile game, and you can only run a dungeon five times a day. That's kind of what Labor is, except that's it's way better than that, in the sense of you have a huge cap of Labor, and labor is spent for essentially anything revolve around, revolving around making money and progressing your character is what you use labor for. For new players, it's going to take you a while to spend your labor. For experienced players, you'll understand how to spend it. But the reason why labor is good is because there's two sides to look at it. Labor is good because, in a sense, you're capped at how fast you can progress a day, which means that everyone, to an extent, will be progressing at an even rate. That's not true across the whole board. But it also allows players to not fall behind as easily as long as they have a basic understanding of the game. I really actually enjoy this system because if you guys remember an old game I played called Skyforge, I think it was. Skyforge had a similar system, but it gated you very heavily in the sense of like you literally couldn't even grind anymore. Arcage isn't like that, right? There are so many things to use your labor on. So many different things, right? Uh, for example, if we open up the proficiency tab, pretty much everything in here, to an extent, is going to utilize labor. Then you have just simply grinding monsters to unravel your gear, upgrade your actual gear, change some stuff on your gear. But when you're out of labor, you can still grind, you can still run dungeons, you can still participate in PvP. PvP gets you honor. Honor allows you to excel your character. You can still do open world stuff. You can still just have fun and play throughout the MMO. You can go look open world for secret areas that people have been doing stuff. There's just so much in general to do. But the reason why I stopped is because Arcage used to have something in the cash shop called a labor potion. And labor potions could be used on every single character on your account. So you'd have six characters and every hour you would log into each one of them and boost your labor. Remember how I just told you labor prevents people from going super far ahead of others? Well, with this system, people could still rapidly excel past others by just putting in this labor. And some people would say, well, it doesn't really matter that much. But then you have to understand that there are literally people who will spend $500 a week on video games. If you think I'm exaggerating, I'm really not. People go super far out of their way to get ahead of others because it just makes them feel good. Anyway, with that being said, all of that shit is completely gone. Arcage Unchained is a fresh start, just like a Path of Exile New League. Everyone's going to be starting level 1. Everyone's going to be on the same playing field. The only thing you can pay money for are cosmetics that are not tradable and cannot be giftable. In fact, one of the reasons why I'm so excited is... Gamigo actually did a live stream. It's not hosted by Tryon anymore. It's being published by Gamigo. On their live stream, they were they were basically talking to their community with 3,000 people, and they were saying, "Hey guys, so you know, all co all cosmetics in the cash shop are not tradable at all, but they're giftable." And then they asked if this was considered pay to win. And the community gave a mixed review. However, after that, people realized that it would be very dangerous to allow gifting because the problem with gifting is, remember how I told you people will do anything they can to get ahead? Well, they would simply 
gift cosmetics for money even though you could get scammed because gifting is not directly trading and then if they earn money from that they don't need to spend their labor which means they can spend their labor purely towards upgrading your gear does that sort of make sense so they really are trying i don't care what anyone says they really are at least making an effort and at the end of the day if you know worst case scenario happens you spend 25 bucks to have fun for one to two months you know like that's not something to complain about i know a lot of people who played wow classic for one month and they're fine with it and it doesn't have to be anything more than that right the optional subscription you can pay is something called an arc pass and the arc pass subscription only gives you untradeable non-giftable cosmetics everyone will truly be playing on an even field however there is one thing that is a bit fishy right now and it's probably not going to get changed but to be fair you can't fix everything everywhere so they allow up to three accounts the problem with having three accounts is technically once you get set up you could use your alts to have super high level crafting and this is different accounts not the same account the same account you're also not allowed to multi-client so you have to do this off time you basically have to play the game a shit ton on your other accounts, you can basically have them sit at a crafting area, level up your crafting, which is going to take a little bit of time depending on what you're doing. And then with that, you could sell those items for gold. And then that gold you could send to your main, and then your main could spend his stuff on etc. But the thing is about this system that people have to realize is if you're popular in a game or you're in a guild or people want to pool money, people are going to pool money. So regardless of you having an extra account, what is you having an extra account compared to 20 people helping one person? It's going to happen in any game you go to. Any game you go to, people will do their best to do whatever they can and get ahead of people. And this is just something you have to accept. This is not a problem with the game. This is a problem with the MMO community. This is just how it is, right? Every game has to bite a bullet somewhere. And this is just where Arcage lies. Thankfully, I don't really care that much because... I'm, I'm kind of over my day of like, you know, playing 24 hours every single day. I want to be number one. I want to be the best. Got to catch them all Pokemon. That's just not what I'm about anymore. I want to go through again, relearn the game, have that beautiful experience because I didn't spend all this time researching. And then when I'm done with that, I'll focus on progressing and gearing and getting to end game right does that like sort of make sense because that's that's what mmos are all about it's about having fun right nobody's gonna do anything if you're number one and like do you get what i'm saying like a lot of the content you guys watched before it, the inspiration came from having fun the inspiration didn't come from wanting to be the best that's just me as my nature my nature is when i'm doing one versus one pvp and i lose i'm happy you know why because losing usually means there's a way to fix something or you can learn from your mistake to an extent when you start getting one shot and there's not much you can do that's when you get a little frustrated but again there's typically counterplay to a lot of different things and that just comes with knowledge and knowledge comes with experience and experience comes by playing at least for me not by just researching so i just wanted to kind of tell you guys a little bit about that now to go into some other stuff that's been changed uh, from when I played, I, there's no way possible I can cover all this stuff, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about some things. Number one, pretty much every single tree, I thought trees were under K, here we go. Pretty much every single tree has been modified in some type of way. So to give you some examples, Shadow Play used to have Shadow Step, Occultist now has Shadow Step. Um, <clears throat> Magic Circle from Sorcery, you can now teleport to. I've never even played with the 55 skills. The passives have been changed a bit. There's ancestral skills, which means a set amount of skills from each class can be modified in some type of way. And that way can, can, can dramatically change the play style of the skill, switch the element, set up for different combos, TLDR, more customization. Customization allows for customization, which means that you're not always limited into your set of things. A lot of people are basically just forcing themselves to play one style because they don't understand that like so basically what's happening right now is there's this class called malediction out and a lot of people like to follow a meta in a lot of games however i'm gonna be the one right now and tell you that the meta of a game will shift all the time and will change and don't always try to compare yourself to the korean meta because let's be honest us westerners are not as good as the koreans and it takes time to adapt and a big thing I want to tell people about your creativity and customization is people who only play the meta 
which is the average, you know, let's just assume the average player playing the meta doesn't always understand what their opponent has. And in PvP, especially in Arcage, it is as important, if not more important, to understand your opponent's potential and your opponent's abilities rather than just your own. Because if you just tunnel vision and try to do the same combo every time, people are going to learn to counter you and you're not going to understand how to play off of them countering you, right? So like back in the day of Arc Age, the big combo I would do as a dagger spell is doing the bubble into Meteor, the bubble into Arc Lightning. But if you break the bubble, what do you do next, right? This is when people panic and they don't understand what to do. And that's what really separates a good player from the average player is, is, is learning and adapting. So, with that being said, there are a number of skills in the utility trees that can be used while you are incapacitated. So like tripped, stunned, frozen, etc. Which is really good because this again is the big separation of people basically panicking and people understanding what to do. <clears throat> On top of that, some skills even reduce global cooldown slash don't really affect your global cooldown, which sets up for proper, you know, comboing and things like that. So the class I plan on playing on release is a Revenant. Revenant is Sorcery, Occultism, and Oromancy. It's mainly used, from what people say, for, like, AoEing, right? So whether it's for AoEing PvE or AoEing in, like, Raid versus Raids. I, however, am under the impression that it still has decent 1v1 slash 1v2 potential, and it's important for me to play something that's got flexibility and that's good for a number of things. As a streamer and as someone who's known in the Arc Age community, I will be attacked a lot. People will hunt me. People are going to go out of their way. And I need to play something that's diverse in that sense, right? Also, for 1v1 PvP, I'm probably going to want to play Dagger Spell at some point. Because I love Dagger Spell. It's so much fun, right? So, um, and this gives me the ability to, to swap pretty easily. Because I'm, I'm going to be playing a caster. So, all i got to do is level up two new trees. And I keep Sorcery. So, another thing about Arc Age Progression to get you guys on your feet. So, the standard of, of gearing up now is so much different from before. So now when you're playing through the game, you're going to get a little box. Right when you're level 5, level 2, level 1, you get a box. You pick plate, you pick leather, or you pick cloth. It, you can play either of those three on any build in the game. You just have to have an idea of what you're doing. If you're wearing plate, casters will shit on you. If you're wearing cloth, physical will shit on you. If you're playing leather, you typically get shit on from both sides because it doesn't have the best of either. However, leather offers the most damage because the set bonus endgame offers the most percentage skill damage, which is, I believe, a multiplier to your skills. So I plan on playing full cloth with a pure physical damage shield, utilizing a scepter as my one-handed weapon. Now, when you are playing through the game, you will have this basic piece of gear, right? So right here, leather armor. I know I'm wearing leather right now. I'll be cloth later. This is for testing on the PTS. So with this, you see how it says synthesis available arcade. So you would take this and when you're questing, you're going to get a little green stone. This is all from the main storyline. You will get the exact amount of stones as your gear, which means unless you delete a piece of gear, which I did by accident, you cannot fuck it up. You can also destroy it with an item you get from the blacksmith and it will give you back all of your stones and everything you used so you always will have that same amount you will use this gear up until about level 50 now when you are when you have your gear the basic premises of what you do is let me show you an example of a stone so this is a stone that i have but it's a higher tier one so you would go with gear upgrade you put this in you put this in right and when you click it it will level up the stats you have on there. So let me just do this as an example to synthesize, and you'll see the stats go up. Now, to get those stats, see so at the bottom I have intelligence and resilience. At a certain point, your gear will hit the highest tier it can, and you will get a scroll also from your quests. When you use this scroll, you will awaken the piece to take it to the next tier, I believe, and it will gain a stat. With that stat, you're basically gonna try to get a stat that you want. Now in the early game, if you wanna properly min-max your character, this may seem a bit convoluted and there's a lot of guides you can find on this and you can always just ask me when I'm streaming, I'll be more than happy to help. In the early game, what you wanna do is, you wanna break down your piece of gear if you don't get the stat you want. Why? Because if you break it down and you get the stat you want early, so you just keep basically redoing it, when you get to the higher tier, when you start getting dual stats, like see how this says received melee damage, you can spend your rerolls on getting the stat that you want. 
you don't want to spend your rerolls on a single stat you want to spend them later on another stat because you have a certain amount of rerolls you can get per piece of gear so you basically will just destroy it early game to lock in the stat which you want then you'll reroll your second stat now that pretty much covers the basic of it and remember you literally cannot fuck this gear up unless you accidentally delete it so remember that as long as you don't delete the gear you can switch from leather to plate, plate to cloth, one hand to two hand, two hand to dual wield, because the stones you get stay. They're always there, right? Other than that, things that have changed, uh, I believe they gutted fishing a little bit. World bosses are still very active. Um, pretty much everything has been changed for the most part. There's actual dungeons to do now. Uh, there's actual dailies, which I know a lot of people don't really like dailies, and I don't necessarily like dailies, but Arcage is a little bit different because there's so much to do in the open world itself. So I feel like the game doesn't really hurt itself from dailies. So I'm, I'm okay with that. It also adds for a lot of fun PvP in the near future. I believe there's also instance world bosses now, and there's still a lot of open world world bosses. There's a flying boss, there's like these ghost ship bosses that that are in the island somewhere or sorry in the water there's just so much shit to do now i'm really excited for it anyway though this is pretty much about it i will make another video going over the build i'm playing and why i'll be playing it more specifically probably in the next one if you guys have any videos you want me to cover i'm gonna try to pump out a couple of them before the release of unchained um so just feel free to drop them down in the comments but remember I am not the best person to create guides and content right now. There are a lot of other YouTubers out there that are creating guides and content, and they've been playing the game a lot longer than I have. I will go back to creating guides and content for Arcage once I am once I basically understand what the hell I'm talking about, because I'm not here to lie to you guys just like always, right? Just like I told you guys five years ago, I'm quitting Arcage. Unsubscribe from my channel if you don't want to see Arcage anymore, or you want to see Arcage because I won't produce it. Here I am telling you guys I will not create the guides unless I have the real information, because I'm always honest to you guys. Anyway, though, I'm going to catch you guys all later. If you guys didn't catch the uh, community post I did on YouTube, we'll be playing on the server Denistrius on East. It is an NA server. We're going to be playing on East, which is this side. Um, and yeah, other than that, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope to see you guys on the next stream. Tomorrow we're going to be talking more about learning basically fresh start and stuff like that. But for now, I'm out. See you guys all tomorrow.